Stand by. Hello, Laura. Hi, Tanya. Hey, Laura Maxwell. Welcome to The Edge television broadcast. Well, thank you for having me, Daniel. Hey, uh, for, first of all, like I said, I love the accent. So, so, hey, you're in, you're in Glasgow, <laughs> around the Glasgow area. What's life like living over there? Yeah, well, it, it's all right. Um, plenty of rain and uh, cold. So, if you ever visit, you got to bring your Wellington boots. Wow. Hey, uh, do you guys got you guys got uh, castles over there and such like that? Oh yeah, um, we stay near Glasgow, and then quite near us, there's a place called Stirling, and it has quite a famous the Stirling Castle, and then of course you've got Edinburgh Castle. Uh-huh. Now, 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 Laura, how, how many of those castles are haunted? Oh uh, well, I'm no doubt there's plenty of demons running around a lot of those castles. Yeah, and no doubt some of them make money from it. So. <laughs> Well, hey, if you got to make money off of somebody, might as well make it off a damn, a damn demon or something. <laughs> I'd rather go cast it out, brother. Oh, hey, well, hey, uh, excuse my language here. I'm, I'm a cowboy over here in the United States of America, and uh, you know, we, <laughs> I, I have I have a horse and everything. So sometimes we we, we get a, we get a little colorful with our language, you know. Yeah, oh. you have a horse, really? Yeah, it's a, it is a, oh. a Suzuki motorcycle. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's a, it's what we call in America. We call it an iron horse. Right, I see. Very good. But that's about, that's about the best I can do, because 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 honestly, man, r- real horses scare me. <laughs> you believe that, right? Okay. Uh, well, hey, well, this is a uh, listen. Uh, this is your first time on the program, and I, I caught a couple of your other broadcasts, and you, you've got a story that I think is important for people to hear. Uh, a lot of people sort of dabble in the and in, in the sort of the dark. Uh, things of the internet and maybe uh, groups of such that have um, uh, connections with, uh, say, a, a dark, a darker side, uh, Laura. And you've got a story to tell. But uh, as we do that, why don't we, g- with you, go back to where you know, h- however young you were, and say when you start, you first got interested in say spiritual things, and you started to to, to look into things. Can you start with that? Yeah, sure. Uh, Well, basically, you know, as a child, I was interested in the paranormal, the supernatural. um, And, of course, as a a child, I would watch children's TV programs um, about ghost stories, UFOs, all that type of thing. Um, And I would read children's books about things like that, too. And really just, um, and of course, Halloween, that was my favourite time of the year because you got to dress up as a witch or a ghost or you know so yeah really anything of the kind of supernatural nature um always interested me as a child and i guess just growing up that the same theme would um just develop and i would get more and more interested in these things plus my mother she was um she had psychic abilities um, since she was a child, and although she didn't talk about it much to my dad, um, she uh, was very interested in that type of thing too. And when my parents divorced, she then got into it in a deeper way, and she started visiting the spiritualist church in Glasgow. Um, and they, of course, encouraged her to develop these abilities of clairvoyance and so on. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, when you dressed up, uh, did you feel? Uh, did you dress up as a witch or yourself? Uh, yeah, just. I mean, I think a lot of children in Scotland do. You okay, know, it's okay. quite popular. So okay. yeah, I was into that okay. as well. Okay, so so when, whenever you did that, did you feel like you were, even as a young child, being empowered in some way? Uh, no, I can't say I did as a young child. No, I wanted to be, and I was hoping that would happen, but. Um, not particularly, I wouldn't say, although I was certainly looking for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Laura, did you ever uh, 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 play a Ouija board? I didn't personally do that, um, but my mother did when she was younger. She did with um, some of her relatives, and they also had um, you know, the ability of divination in the family line. So they and her got together and did that. When she became a a spiritualist, when she did become a a clairvoyant, um, the mediums that she hung out with 
all believed Ouija boards um, and tarot cards actually were, were very dangerous and they would they would dissuade anyone from, from doing that. I realise today a lot of mediums are into doing that, but back in our time we were encouraged not to go anywhere near that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Did your mom ever tell you of any events that happened when she messed with the Ouija board? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, the, the, the glass would move and, and fly off the table and, and smash and, and the board um, uh, entities would use the board to say horrible words and, and cursing words and so on. Um, and her aunt, when she had played it when she was younger, um, I can't remember exactly, but something to do with it, it told them that a friend would would die on a railway track in near Glasgow, and that did eventually happen to a friend. Mm, mm. Uh, did you say that the uh, the Ouija board spelled out cuss words? Yeah. Uh huh. Hmm. And so did that? Uh, did your did did your mom say that she got excited about these events? Um, I I think well she got frightened, but yeah, excited. I guess to them it was proof. Hey, there is something else out there. There are entities out there. So although they didn't want to play the Ouija board again, it certainly confirmed to them that you know the paranormal was real and and that piqued her interest in it more. Mm-hmm. What, so what is it about the Ouija board? You think is is that a, like a porthole or? Uh some device, some something that is—is is it just a matter that people expect that it will work, and they give a—they uh, give it—they're giving permission, or uh, what's your view of that? I think um, both actually, and, and you know, it's very similar. Of course, you know, nowadays we have with the advance in, in technology and so on, there are other things now on the scene like the ghost box, the spirit box, um, EVP recording machines um which basically in my opinion are like a, a glorified ouija board really um they're maybe doing things on a more scientific level but they're still certainly opening as you say a portal opening a, a spiritual door right. to allow allow any entities that happen to just want to come through mm-hmm. um not really much of a safeguard mm-hmm. in place there i would say mm-hmm. for people i would just say to avoid it obviously that's my opinion anyway mm-hmm. is, is your mother still alive no, um, I can tell you what happened um, throughout my story. We'll come to what happened uh, with her regarding it all, and it's really quite a very telling okay. situation, really. Okay. All right. Uh, would you talk about our spiritual quest? Why, why do you use the word our instead of my? Um, I started off by calling it a spiritual quest, and then I thought, well, of course, that's implying it, it's just mine. Um Our spiritual quest, really because I wanted it to appeal more to people um, on a more broad spectrum so that they're not going to think this is just one person's spiritual quest, but in actual fact, the things that I have to share are in actual fact applicable to everyone, Um, even perhaps if they don't see that at first, that I hope that they do, and I hope they stop by and have a little look and um, Mm -hmm. scratch under the surface a little bit and really just... Our spiritual quest, I would say, is, is really just to um, awaken as many people as possible to, to the realities of, of the paranormal uh, activity. And, and really, that it's also God's quest because God loves people and he wants to protect people um, fr- from dangerous activities. Mm-hmm. All right. So you're, you're, you're coming along as, as a little girl and you like, um, as a lot of children do, Halloween and so, so what was the the next level uh, from that? Yeah, well, again, you know, growing up, of course, there, there would be other things like you know, um, Eastern spiritual practices, m- mystical practices, anything like that that I could read about or watch on TV. I was definitely into that. Uh, and then, you know, when my mother. Um, she happened to be out one day walking the dogs in the park and a local medium who hadn't met her before approached her and said he could see that she had these psychic abilities, clairvoyance and so on, and that he would love her to come join um, the Spiritualist Church in Glasgow where they were all that way too and they could help her develop these abilities uh, and help her develop to become 
uh, a medium. Mm -hmm. So she was thrilled at this because she had had some psychic experiences. And, of course, she went along. And, you know, pretty soon I started going along with her, too, because I was also fascinated in that. And I also wanted to learn to do that, too. Mm. Did you? Um, I went with her for years, and although I didn't become a practicing medium, um, I certainly wanted to, and I was aiming towards that. But I was quite young. I was a, a young, uh, a preteen, then a teenager, a, a young woman, and I was still at, at school and then college and uni. Um, it was something I wanted to get into when I was a bit older, but my mother certainly went into it uh, full steam ahead. She began to channel entities and so on. I didn't do the channeling, but I certainly attended everything they had going there, and I certainly saw many uh, channeling phenomena taking place. I saw, you know, mediums going into full trance and um, spirits coming through them. I was very much into watching it and being a part of it, reading it, studying it, um, and did that um, for for years actually along with my mother. Mm -hmm. So, so is is, is that a, is that a, a skill that you developed? Did did you feel like you were? I mean, do, is it something that that you say exercise and get better, or is it something that the other side gives you more power to do? Yeah, well, it tends to be that it, it's often um, inherited down the family line, whether the mother's side or father's side. Sometimes it. Uh, skips generations but it tends to be a, a, an inherited ability but of course people who um, haven't got any ability that way or, or, or just a slight ability if they do go and train and develop then yes it will certainly develop especially when um, they go to classes where they are mm -hmm. calling on you know their spirit guides or ascended masters or guardian angels or whatever to come and help them develop it then yes it can be developed okay i uh there's a program on here in the united states called coast to coast and it's uh the host on that show is, is a guy named george nori i remember hearing him one time saying that he uh lets his spirit guides guide him in his program uh would you have any advice for him on that um well yeah i guess it, you know maybe sometime he could check out my story and have a little listen and, and to folks like me um I think Bill Bean, I think he may have heard of Bill Bean. Um, he's a friend of mine and, and he actually had a very similar experience as I did um, regarding these things. And basically I would say to anyone, um, obviously I was into this very deeply along with my mother and friends and we firmly believed we had spirit guides and, mm -hmm. and even dead relatives mm -hmm. oh. communicating with us. Mm -hmm. We firmly believed it. And there certainly was, appeared to be plenty of evidence of it. But unfortunately, we discovered it was actually a deception and that these beings were not what they were claiming to be. And we did begin to find that out um, by various things that had happened to us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's not always all that glitters isn't gold, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, although I know people would like it to be true. We discovered it not to be, and, and that's why I do share my story with folks, hmm. just as a gentle warning to people. So if the devil uh, offers you a check, assume it's a it's a ticket to hell, probably, eh? Well, I would say so. And, and you know, back in the day when I was a, a New Ager and a spiritualist, if anyone had said that to me, I would be horrified. In fact, one person did say to me that I had Satan in my life and mm -hmm. I was absolutely horrified and really upset and really hurt. I thought, how dare they say that to me? What a horrible thing to say. But, you know, eventually I found out myself it was actually true through various things that happened to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a Dreamwalker, uh, there are people watching the show and there's a, a live chat going on now. So a lot of our questions come from that live chat. One of them, uh, avatar name of Dreamwalker says, can you talk about what the spiritual quest is specifically? Well, really, that's the name um, that I've given to my blog mm -hmm. um, and really my, my ministry. I just thought it was a name that might be easy for folks to remember rather than trying to remember my name. Mm -hmm. um, and I just thought it would a attract mm -hmm. people to, to looking at my blog and checking out, as I say, mm -hmm. my story and many, many people that went through very similar um, to me all around the world from all different nationalities and well, of course, all down the ages. It's, it's actually a very common story. Mm -hmm. It's not unique. 
people tend to think it's unique, and, and I do speak on lots of radio shows and so on, but it's actually very, very common. It's just that it's the type of story that tends to be kept quiet, sadly, um, and certainly not on the mainstream at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it is actually incredibly common. I, you know, I came out of all of that movement twenty years ago, and since then I c- constantly hear of people going through the exact same thing that that I went through, and coming to the same conclusion that I came to. So mm-hmm. it's certainly not a minority type experience. Mm-hmm. It's actually very common, mm-hmm. and I would urge people to, to to listen in if if they could be so grateful. Mm. Uh, the spiritual quest part of it. Um as you, as you, if you looked on the web, all on the website, I describe myself as a cosmic cowboy. But really, part of that's tongue in cheek. But the other part of it is that that is is a, a indicative of a sort of a, a spiritual thing. I consider myself uh, on a lifelong spiritual quest, really. And it's part of it's really ingrained into the show. We've had a lot of people on the show to explain spiritual things, and so I think that's sort of the universality of of people. On a, they should. I would believe that everybody should be on a spiritual quest because there, what happens to us in life seems to have have so many ramifications and long lasting effects that it just seems like it's going to ripple through time and space. And so, if there's some correct way to say walk in 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 the spirit or or to 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 do the things that are sort of spiritual, that's really kind of what I I want to do. So I'm on a spiritual quest, and I uh, do suggest everyone else be on one too and there's a lot of ways that can be rolled out in, in a person's life let's get to another question this is from philip in georgia on the live chat or on the fast blast he says how did your mother get started with the occult but i think you explained that did you yeah basically she she had some experiences when she was a child that, that she just had and and i guess they were just inherited because she didn't do anything um to invite these things that just happened. Then, yeah, she played a Ouija board. She had um, an uncle who was the the leading minister in a spiritualist church in Scotland. He was also high up in Freemasonry, by the way, so that belief in Lucifer was coming, um, you know, from two sides for him and a few cousins who were into it as well, so it was in the family. But yeah, really, when she started going to the spiritualist church, she developed a lot more um, along those lines, and, and I went along with her too. So we sometimes went to um, a transfiguration session, and that's where oh. the medium went into full trance, and you know, lost consciousness, didn't know what she was doing, and allowed spirits to come through her. Mm-hmm. Literally, we we could see them forming and coming through, kind of like a mist. Um, coming through her and, and looking like a person and giving, um, you know, a message to a family member mm-hmm. meant to be in the in the congregation. Yeah. So, it, you know, it was all very real phenomena, certainly not trickery. It was definitely uh, definitely real um, phenomena that was mm-hmm. taking place. Uh, L- Laura, what, 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 did, what does that word mean, transfiguration? What, what's, what was happening with that? Well, um, I, I guess today um, people might call it different things they might say uh, channeling it, it, it was channeling where whereby it was rather than just at the psychic level or telepathic level or rather than just the entity's voice speaking through the medium the medium was going into full transfiguration where their body shape actually changed it would look like that you know watching it you would think the medium's body was changing shape mm-hmm. when in fact it was actually this entity just coming out of her body and standing in front of her so it would appear her body was changing shape you know to look like this other entity um but yeah so and we read of books down through the ages where this took place and, and often mediums themselves would say it's actually a very dangerous practice and that sometimes mediums could be harmed, sometimes even killed um, by doing this. We only saw it happen a few times, but it was certainly one of those things that intrigued us and, and kept us going along mm-hmm. to those types of sessions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Steve Ellis has this question out of the live chat. Did any of these spirits uh, follow your mother or yourself home? Uh, yes, uh, and we we believed that, that these were our dead relatives and also that these were entities such as spirit guides or ascended masters and so on. Um, that's what we believed and obviously our friends did too, the other 
mediums and channelers. Um, and, and this went on for years and, and you know, m- most of the time it seemed really lovely and just fantastic to have this guidance from these beings. But we began to hear rumours through the grapevine that oftentimes channelers could not control when these beings spoke through them or, or were even harmed by these beings and attacked by them. Now, we looked for an explanations for this and our leaders would tell us, yes, that can sometimes happen. You know, you're dealing with spirits. Sometimes an obnoxious spirit will come through. Mm-hmm. That's a hazard of the job, but you should be protected. You should be okay. But eventually it did begin to happen to us, Daniel, and um, it, it was not a pleasant experience at all. And unfortunately, this continued for a great deal of time. And our, our friends, the, the mediums and channelers, lovely, lovely people, by the way. I really loved them all. So did my mum. Um, they would try to help, but they couldn't get us free from this um, harassment. And, and, you know, it began to be perplexing because at first, when these so-called spirits would be obnoxious to us, would swear and curse at us, would, would uh, attack us and harm us, um, you could understand the explanation, oh, well, an evil spirit just happened to get through. But when it even was beginning to happen from these beings who had for years claimed to be our spirit guides, claimed to be our dead relatives, that was the perplexing thing. You know, mm-hmm. why would your dead relative suddenly turn against you and attack you? Mm-hmm. Um, this was a thing that, that really began to make us begin to question what we were involved in. Mm. Uh uh, in in the in the realm of, of being attacked, uh, did you or any members of your family ever uh, get attacked by an incubus or a succubus? Yes, indeed, I had that a couple of times, um, not to a serious level, but my mother most certainly did. And yes, this was terribly traumatic for her, terribly um, dis- disabling. She gave up her employment; she could no longer cope these beings were attacking her night and day. She, she hardly got any sleep. It was really, really horrendous. And, and, and I got, got some of it too. I was still living there, obviously, at home. We had the sleep paralysis that doctors call it. Um, you know, the, these beings trying to choke you, trying to strangle you, trying to kill us, basically. Mm-hmm. It was actually a living nightmare. Mm-hmm. And, and I think what some folks can be a bit fascinated by these things or, or like watching ghost stories or ghost films on TV and, you know, they can feel excited at, at, at being scared by it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I understand that level when people are attracted to these things. But my goodness, unless you've experienced this for yourself, the, the absolute sense of evil, it, it's an evil that you cannot describe. It's a supernatural evil and it feels like nothing you've ever been through um, on earth no fear can describe the, the horrors of being attacked by these entities mm-hmm. uh, is it possible for uh, a uh, uh, a person to be impregnated by incubus or succubus um, well I'm not an expert on that um, I think it's possible but, but I really don't know I wouldn't like to say Mm-hmm. For sure, um, uh, certainly I'm sure people have, have said they have been. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't know. I do often wonder myself, you know, about, about the Antichrist. How, how does he come about if he's a pure uh, demonic, you know, being then who is his mother, for example? But I really, I really don't know. It's not something I, I know a lot about and I don't tend to go into, to be honest. Um, okay. But certainly... You know, and I think what's important to say to folks is when, when folks, I know a lot of folks are interested in ghost hunting or, or, or channeling um, so-called ghosts or so-called aliens. And I think I would like to say um, that, you know, really, if someone had said to me back in the day, it might have made me question it a little bit if someone had perhaps said something like, um, Laura, you think you are um, talking to ghosts just because they tell you that's who they are they tell you it's your dead grand or or, you know your dead uncle and you think the mediums are helping ghosts go onto the light just because they tell you they are but what if these spirits are actually all of them telling lies well if it if it's you know you wouldn't know you would just blindly trust them like like my mother and i did of course you wouldn't have any reason to mm, doubt them or think they're mm. trying to 
deceive you. But what if they actually are telling lies and they're not dead relatives and they're not these spirit guides? Um, it's a serious thing to be deceived by these masquerading evil spirits. Well, if your uncle came in that way, it, it would be like it, that would be incest, though. But hey, along that line, somebody asked if, if there if there can be a sort of a demonic impregnation would the would the child be invisible would it be a, a human with no soul or, or and i know you said you're not an expert just i'm just wondering out loud really or would it be uh would it be sort of a ghost you know and then maybe just follows a person around all the time all right let's get to this question another question from the live chat it says uh, laura do you believe that spirits can attach to a person yeah i believe people that um can require what I call deliverance ministry. I guess some people would use the word exorcism. And yeah, I had that happen to me myself when I eventually came out of the New Age and the spiritualist movement. I certainly had uh, demons in me that needed to be cast out Mm -hmm. and they came out uh, in Jesus' name. And that was kind of a surprise because I wasn't necessarily expecting that. So when they came out, I thought, wow, I really was into some dodgy stuff over the years right enough. Um, And, you know, also I think it's important to say, you know, part of the theory that we were taught, of course, stemmed from uh, theosophy and many of these famous spiritualist mediums were self-confessed Luciferians, going back to the 1830s with Madame Helena Blavatsky and then, of course, Alice Bailey and so on. And and basically the, the theory is that they believe that Lucifer is actually... God, if you like, that Lucifer is source and that all religions, all faiths, all types of spiritual um, abilities actually all come from Lucifer and that Christians are wrong, the Bible is wrong, Mm -hmm. he did not fall and become Satan, Mm -hmm. that he's still this wonderful Mm -hmm. angel of light. Um, I I find that interesting now because I did firmly believe that back then, but I find it interesting now because, of course, now that I am a Christian, I now see the parallels because, you know, the the Bible does talk about that and it does talk about that very deception. It does talk about uh, so-called ghosts and, um, you know, speaking to, to entities and so on and that we find that in the name of Jesus Christ, these beings do leave. So... I think it's it's interesting. Anybody who believes Lucifer is still an angel of light, I would ask them, please just question that a little bit. And mm-hmm. what if the Bible really is true? What if he really did become fall and become Satan and these so-called entities are actually yeah. demons? It's a scary place to be in uh, if that's what's okay, you know, l- true. L- l- let me ask you something. Uh, what, did you when, <clears throat> when you began to see that these, these, these spirit beings, uh, ascended masters, uh, ghosts or whatever you want to call them, uh, entities uh, began to have a real effect and a, a terrible and frightening effect. Uh, why didn't you turn to Islam for salvation? Mm-hmm. Very interesting question, Daniel. And, you know, you, you've exactly hit the, the nail on the head there because in actual fact, my mother and I, we turned to Oh, we looked at lots of different religions for help and we even got encyclopedias about different kinds of gods, different deities, different goddesses. And we really um, prayed, if you like, to to any kind of a god or goddess that could help us. But interestingly, Jesus Christ was the very last one that we actually came to. And I think it's, yeah, and I think it's just because... I guess where we grew up in Scotland, Christianity was was it seemed to us to be very dead, very boring. Um, we'd probably only been to a few churches that really just we just felt God isn't even in there. Nothing supernatural is happening in there. We'd certainly never been to a Christian church where we saw people being healed, where we saw demons being cast out, where we saw people speaking in tongues, where we saw miracles. So we just assumed the Christian faith was nonsense, basically. And yeah, Jesus happened to be the last one that the, we actually turned to. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. so how did you go into that? If, if um, you, you didn't see <clears throat> deliverance or uh, miracles or, as you said, speaking in tongues, you know, the sort of a spiritual manifestation of, a, of an alive and thriving church, uh, how, how is it you came back to that? Yeah, well, well, basically, as I said, you know, earlier things were getting so bad. My mother and I were being attacked. 
um, she would be, for example, she used to be able to, if she wanted to go into trance and she wanted to communicate with entities, she would do some yoga, she would meditate and, and she would go into trance. But now um, these beings were forcing their way through her to go into trance when they wanted to, when they wanted to speak through her. And she was losing time and she didn't know what she'd been doing. Um, one of these occasions when they did this to her, she was actually cooking in the kitchen and the, the whole kitchen was engulfed by flames. You know, the, the fire brigade had to come and put it out. We could have been killed, I guess. Um, horrific experience. Um, other times I was with her, we would be out, you know, going to the mall and she would be picked up and thrown across wow. the, the street by entities which you could call poltergeist activities, but I tend to class all of these entities under the word of demon or fallen angel. Um, so things were getting so bad um, that really it was just awful and, and her life was not her own anymore. She was under constant uh, harassment. Mm -hmm. So she went to her, her doctor and explained this and she asked for some sleeping pills or some tranquilizers to really just to knock her out to try and get some sleep. Well, the doctor said, I don't believe in spirits. I don't believe in hearing voices and so on. I believe you're schizophrenic and um, you're in danger. So I need to admit you into the psychiatric hospital. And that's exactly what happened. Wow. And what happened to you when she got thrown into the psych ward? <sighs> well, you can imagine I was absolutely sh oh distraught this was my mother and of course I knew it was real spirit entities and there's no point in me trying to convince the psychiatrist otherwise I knew it was real mm -hmm. um, or you might get thrown in there well exactly um, we had um, you know heard of this before we'd heard of other psychics and channelers who had ended up in there so it wasn't a huge surprise but of course it was a personal shock so yeah she was in there and this was round about the time she'd been in there a couple of months and by now I, I'd now left school. I was now at university and I met a woman in my, in my class and she was a Christian. I started to tell her my story and she kept inviting me to her church and I kept saying, you know, I'm really not interested. As far as I was concerned, Jesus Christ was probably a medium, you know, um, maybe a, a great psychic healer. I did not believe he was the son of God or the saviour and I really wasn't interested. But she kept asking and, and she was really nice and so I thought, okay, I'll go. Um, also because she said something that attracted me actually, I realised her church was different. I, I realised that it, it didn't have this, you know, deadness about it, but, but there was something real because she said we often have speakers who come with the gift of healing or the gift of prophecy. So I thought, hmm okay, that sounds kind of supernatural. I might be interested in that. Okay. So, you know, I went along and basically um, I just had not experienced anything like it. And it was the presence of God, although I didn't know that then. I just knew that the, that the atmosphere was absolutely wonderful. I did not want to leave the place. I heard the Christians speaking in tongues um, and I knew it was supernatural. I could sense that and it just really intrigued me. And she said Jesus could help me um, with these problems I was having at home um, as well because I was being attacked at home. By now, of course, I was married and had a child and we were having phenomena at home. So I thought, well, I went home and I really didn't know what to believe yet. But I went home and lo and behold, there was a Bible sitting right at my front door which I had found earlier, along with other old books and so on, that I had been doing some spring cleaning and intended to take to a charity shop the very next day. So the Bible caught my eye and I thought, well, you know, why don't I just pray and ask God, is this true? Is Jesus Christ the Saviour? Um, you know, can he help me? And I did just that. Now, the spirits were furious, furious, and I really felt they were going to kill me. That's how bad it was. Uh, uh, the, the presence of evil intensified. Um, I really thought they may just well kill me that night. I kept the lights on all night. Um, and I did pray to God and I did ask about Jesus. And I, I found um, when I opened the Bible 
there there were scriptures exactly about this whole phenomena and exactly about how entities can masquerade as if they are angels of light, um, as if they are these entities that are good and wholesome when in actual fact they're deceptive. So this utterly blew me away. Um, and then I kept seeing the face of this Roman gypsy woman who would come around the neighbourhood once a year and, and do some divination for people and I could not get her out of my mind. Well, the very next day she came to the door and she said to me, um, Laura, she said, I have stopped um, being involved in spirit communication, she said, because I have come to Jesus Christ, accepted him as my saviour, I'm now born again. Those abilities have vanished. I can't do those things anymore and I'm no longer you know, talking to spirits and so on. And she said, the reason I'm here today is because I feel Jesus prompted me to come visit you and tell you you are now on the right path. He is the answer. Wow. So for a former medium to come and tell me that, I just felt was a little answer to prayer that God was saying, yeah, you know, this is true. And I started going along to, to that Christian church. I had the revelation that Jesus Christ really was the Savior. So I asked him into my heart and asked him to help me. And bearing in mind, you know, my mother was still in the hospital at this point. So I told her and she was certainly not happy at first, but eventually she saw such a change in me and she came along to the church and she liked it. She, she liked the atmosphere. She too asked Jesus into her life. Can you still hear me, Daniel? I sure can. Just loud and clear. And um, so, and actually the, the, the doctors said she, she, she was improving, um, they felt, and so they discharged her and let her go back home. But you see, the problem is those demons were still in her home. They were still in my home. And the this Christian church we had started to go to, the pastor was quite a young man. I, I, it was a young church. Therefore, he, he didn't know about the deliverance ministry or exorcism. And he, quite frankly, felt that now that I was a Christian and my mother was, that there is no way demons can be still troubling you or that you need any exorcism. So he actually thought that we were both mentally ill and that I needed to go into a psychiatric hospital too. Um, in fact, he, he pleaded with my husband to take me there. And thankfully, my husband knew it was real supernatural experiences, you know, and he didn't do that, thank God. So, but sadly, what it meant was we were left with this problem. Now, we were just baby Christians. We didn't know what else to do. And tragically, um, very shortly after uh, my mother went home, she actually killed herself. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that was 20 years ago now. And I've been talking about it ever since. And time and time again, people will contact me. They have maybe saw me on TV, read a magazine or whatever. And they've said to me, your story mirrors mine or mirrors my sister's or mirrors my friend who have been through the exact same type of thing. So it is not a unique story at all. It's actually very common. It just mm. doesn't tend to get aired much. Mm. Um, but, you know, what that what then happened, of course, was I realised, you know, bless him, my pastor's a young man, he's not very experienced. I need to get help uh, before the, these demons, you know, kill me. Mm. And so then it, it was a case of hunting around for a Christian church that did have a deliverance ministry, that did believe that demons can afflict people, whether they're Christian or not, and uh, cast those things out of me and got me set free in Jesus' name. And, and that's exactly what happened. Or I might not be here today, quite frankly. Mm. Um, I, you know, I believe that, that God did save my life. Uh, so, Lord, do you think that the, the, the demons convinced your mother to kill herself? Um. She had told me that they certainly told her to. They certainly threatened to kill her and they told her to do it. Um, but it wasn't just that. She, quite frankly, had had enough of the constant harassment and, and just the feeling that there was no hope, especially when this when the young Christian pastor, you know, just didn't think she needed spiritual help. Mm. And she just had had enough, quite frankly. Um, and, yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, if you, you can imagine people putting up with incubus and succubus every night, I mean, eventually that's going to take its toll. And 
that's why I do tell my story because I really plead with Christians everywhere. Um, read the Bible, see that Jesus cast out demons, see that the disciples cast out demons. We can still do that today. So let's get out there and do that and help people um, instead of they maybe run somewhere else to try and get help and, and it might even become worse. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the mm-hmm. church sadly isn't, isn't doing its job. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and that's, that's one of the arguments that I've had with the, the, the church, and that is trying, they, they seem to address things on sort of a carnal level. I mean, if you go to church and they're telling you to go take some pills or see a doctor, you mm-hmm. know, then, then that's the, really the wrong church to be in. Uh, and I, I know people that have been told that very same thing is that, you know, you need, Mm -hmm. you need help Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you need to, you know, see a doctor and when in fact, you know, they, it's, it's a spiritual thing. And the reason is because churches, they, they don't, they want, they just want to have, uh, sort of self help things. And, and I'm not talking about demon casting out or exorcism. I'm talking about self help, like, uh, you know, how to lose weight, you know, weight, losing weight for Jesus or, uh, you know, um, motorcycles for Jesus, or, I mean, there's a, there's an infinite number of these kind of programs and, and, and mm-hmm. infinite studies. And they never, a lot of them never get to the sort of the really meaty, deep down spiritual things that releases the power of God's in people life. And I think it's almost as like they don't want people to, so they'll kind of, kind of need them. You know, I, I, I don't know. What's your view on that? Um, I guess each and every church will be different and, and have their own reasons. Some may well be what you've said there, Daniel, but I think many just uh, simply don't believe um, or they feel that, OK, yeah, that happened back in Jesus' day, but it doesn't happen today and no such thing as demons now, which to me is a strange argument because, hey, the old cult is so on the rise now. There are so many um things going on, you know, with, with whether it's ghost hunting or, or, or magic or witchcraft or, or the very, very dark stuff like Satanism and so on. How, you know, how would the demons have disappeared? It doesn't make any sense. Um, if anything, they're more active in this day and age, I would think. But yeah, and then, of course, you'll have some, some churches, I feel, probably just frightened of it and, and just would rather, well, let's not think about that. Maybe the church up the up the other side of town will deal with it because it's uh, just too real for us. Mm. I guess there's a, there's a range of reasons why, but it is it is very sad mm. for the people who who need help. There's uh you know you you mentioned and we're getting we're getting close to the top of the hour here. We take a five minute break, uh, Laura, and you'll you'll be on the line, but turn down. Uh, but let me you mentioned something about uh, so almost like uh, uh, there was like a from what I, what I gather was there was almost like a deal made with the entities, and in the beginning it it seemed like it was sort of interesting stuff and uh, spiritual stuff and things were happening. But then you said, but then they started doing what they wanted to do. And that, that mm-hmm. reminds me of, of uh, uh, here, here, here in America, th- there's claims that our one of our earlier presidents made a deal with the aliens that came to visit. And I don't forget which president it was, but, uh, mm-hmm. and, and then what happened was uh, it was sort of a, the deal was made with the aliens was you can take and abduct humans uh, as long as you let us know who or keep track or you, they gave them a limited number of humans. But then they say that the aliens scrapped that deal and started taking people at any time they wanted to. And they stopped reporting to the U.S. government, sort of mm-hmm. kind of like a, you know, making a deal with the devil. But the devil's a liar. And yeah. once you make a deal yeah. with him one way or another, he's going to break that deal. Uh huh. Exactly. And, you know, I believe it's the same with um, the guys over at CERN or or whatever people are doing it in a, in a spiritual sense, where, where they feel they're getting power from certain entities, certain beings, and thinking that they can channel this energy and this power and they can use it to gain things. You know, Satan is a liar. These beings are liars. Yes, they'll give you power, but they will make you think you are in control. A lot of people who channel these beings think they're in control because they can turn it on when they want, turn it off when they want. Mm-hmm. But it is actually a big lie, and they are actually in control and it is as if in the beginning you have yeah given your invited them into your life you have given them your soul if you like um even though you've not made a deal as such Mm -hmm. in a literal sense satan sees it that way these entities see it that way and even if you have a wonderful life doing those things and nothing seems to trouble you they're going to come for you at your death you know i remember that film 
um, ghost back in the 80s and there's a, a kind of a scene where someone dies and a lovely angel comes, takes them up the way. Someone dies who was an evil person and this demon comes, takes them down the way. You know, we've all saw that type of analogy. And I'm afraid that's exactly what these entities want to do. They want to keep people away from Jesus Christ and salvation in him and they want to take them the other way. And I sa- sadly found that, thankfully found out for myself and um, came to God to save me from it all. Mm. Okay, uh, Laura, we are at the top of the hour. Anything you'd like to say about your blog or your book or uh, your website, anything like that, you go right ahead. Our, squir- our spiritualquest.com. I nearly said squirrel. Our spiritualquest.com. Okay. All right. Uh, you can just stay on the line and you can take a break yourself. I'm going to turn you down and we'll be back with you in five minutes. Okay, Laura? Okay, thank you. All right. All right, everybody, you're watching and or listening to the Edge Television broadcast on our newsmaker line tonight. All the way from Glasgow, Scotland, is Laura Maxwell telling about her spiritual quest. And hopefully you are on one and hopefully you're heading in the right direction. We're going to take a five-minute break. We're going to be right back. Thanks, Daniel. Well, it was interesting in the first hour. A lot of spiritual things has happened to you. Uh, um you mentioned earlier in the first hour about Freemasonry. That seems to be a big thing over here in the United States. A lot of our buildings have Freemason signs on them. Who's who's controlling those people, and what do they want? Yeah, well, you know, basically, you know, back in the day, we, we were certainly taught that the whole kind of a New Age teaching that the, the Freemasons, the spiritualists, you know, witches, channelers – Really, everyone with any type of spiritual uh, power, we're really all under the umbrella of of Lucifer, um, that that he was God, um, and basically, you know, we we believed that, and we were very much into the agenda, the plan of really trying to see the masses come this way of giving up ideas like Christianity and Jesus and mm-hmm. and really beginning to explore the mystical and the paranormal. And whether or not they were of any religion or no religion, mm-hmm. we felt it doesn't really matter. All roads lead to God, as it were. And actually, all these roads lead to Lucifer. So, yeah, um, as I say, there are some, like, like we certainly thought Lucifer was a good guy. He was an angel of light. But, of course, there are also the types of Luciferians who recognize that he is actually Satan, um, the devil, and that it is a very dark plan that they are serving. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a guest on a program once before, and, and they the show, show was actually about Scotland, and he was saying, <clears throat> uh, Doug Ewell is his name, and he was saying that uh, Scotland is uh, sort of a uh, what he was described as a thin place, like the it's a... It's, uh, a lot of spiritual activity happens there. Uh, you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, kind of tongue in cheek about haunted castles earlier, uh, but I guess mm-hmm. they do exist, in fact. But, uh, but Scotland itself seems to be like a really old country, and some of the old kind of mysticism and and things like that sort of came out of that. From from where I'm sitting, I mean, I'm not an expert mm-hmm. on it, mm-hmm. but do you agree with that? Is is Scotland sort of a, a bastion of sort of this uh, really old spiritual kind of entity? place yeah i would say so and you know as as we know that the celtic um traditions came came from from here the 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 ancient um celtic the paganism and so on and and the druids and and even you know halloween a lot of that um in its uh, original form um began in scotland and ireland so and yeah and then of course you have a lot of um occultists come here and have continued to do so. Of course, you had Alistair Crowley, and you have a very famous uh, New Age centre called the Fintorn New Age Centre. Um, yeah, so I think whatever has went on in the in the ancient past, those, um, you might call them portals, but I would probably use the word spiritual doorways or, or whatever, those demonic entities, yeah, are definitely still on the land, and yes, they will mean that this is a land that is very... Mm-hmm. Um, open to divination and, and all, all types of yeah. occult activity yeah, yeah. um you mentioned uh, that uh, you you you're familiar you, you know you've dealt with bill bean uh, just this is not really sort of on topic but let me ask you something bill bean lately has been uh, talking about uh, something called the mandela effect uh, have you heard of that i've heard of it yeah um 
And, you know, it, it's not something that I feel, uh, you know, to research on or talk about at any great length personally. Okay. And I guess, I guess, though, that at the end of the day, my opinion is that, you know, what, whatever is going on and um, whatever plan Satan has or demons have to deceive people into doubting the inerrancy of the Bible, to deceive people, to destroy people's faith in, in Christ, whatever uh, his wicked plans are, God foresaw, foresaw this already. God knew about all of this mm -hmm. um, you know, right from the beginning. He knows uh, how the story will end and he knows that in the end uh, Satan will be defeated because Jesus, you know, he will throw him into the lake of fire. We know how the book of Revelation ends. So, yes, dark days ahead. I agree with that. But I feel that for, for those who come to, 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 to Revelation in Christ and come to putting their faith in him will be protected um, no matter how dark it gets. Now, we may be killed, yeah, but I'm talking about, you know, your soul, your eternal protection will be uh, with Christ in heaven and protected. Okay. So. That's kind of how I would sum up my feelings on that. Okay. All right. This is <clears throat> this is from Fast Blast, John in Pennsylvania. Uh, should a uh, Laura says should a mentally mentally ill seek an exorcist, a herbalist, or a psychiatrist? Um, good question. <clears throat> you know, w w when I was uh, visiting in the psychiatric hospital, I saw people that I could see it was the demonic that was harassing them. Um, I was even visiting in, in there a good few years ago. Now, this time when I was a Christian, uh, I, I mean, and I saw that, and I did actually pray for people, and they were set free um, from demons, and they got discharged from the hospital. Do I recommend uh, we all start doing that? Well, it's a very delicate subject, and I think you have to be really sure God is, is calling you mm -hmm. to, to do that. Um, and it's not, not everyone is in the right place to receive deliverance it, it can be frightening for someone if they're psychotic um for you to start praying for them etc mm -hmm. but you know god uses psychiatry too he uses medicine too um so basically i would say you know be led by 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 god in, in that but it is a it's an interesting topic for sure okay now here's a question um have you uh consulted familiar spirits yourself repeatedly Oh yeah, you know, I, I I was a new ager. I was a spiritualist. I certainly uh, uh, called myself a spiritualist. My mother was the practicing medium, if you like. She was a channeler, but I certainly did consult. I visited other mediums. I went to seances where I had the medium's attention for a full half hour, and the medium would channel these entities through to did me. They, did they yeah, appear? Yeah, yeah, definitely familiar spirits. Okay, Laura, did did they appear to you in a form? Uh, not most of the time, some of the time, most of the time I didn't see them, but my mother certainly saw them and others too. Um, I was more, I kind of sensed them more or I sometimes heard them, but I didn't actually see them. <clears throat> uh, I certainly saw when they, when they morphed into demons and tried to attack me though, I, I saw that. What did they look like? <sighs> well... Really horrible, like you know, if Hollywood is is very good at, at, at horror movies and and horrible things, like even Lord of the Rings and the creatures they had in that, basically the most horrible things you could imagine. Not something you would want to meet at all. Mm -hmm. And as I say, the evil that, that that you feel from them is absolutely <laughs> awful. At uh, one night, I just remembered actually, one night my mother, um, one one night when they were trying to kill her, she shouted for help she 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 wanted help she thought maybe she just needed a higher ascended master or a you know a more evolved angel or whatever mm -hmm. she started calling for help and this angel turned up and she believed it to be lucifer he oh. came to her he was the most beautiful white shining angel and he came to her and she thought finally help had come but as he approached her he suddenly made snakes uh, manifest all over the bed. There was a huge eye of Horus, the evil eye on the wall, and she suddenly realized, hey, Lucifer is not Lucifer after all. He really is Satan, and he was out to kill her. And that was the night she started shouting on Jesus Christ mm. um, she, for the first time, and, and that uh, being disappeared. Wow, man, snakes on the bed. That is, that is some creepy, evil-sounding stuff there. Uh, Doc out of the live chat asked this question here to you, Laura. Do you ever... Did you ever use cleansing sage or crystals to drive 
out or remove spirits? Uh, no, we didn't. We had other kind of a methods, but uh, yeah, I've heard of folks that have have tried to to do it that way. What what we have since found was that sometimes these methods seem to work, but we, we heard and found out from other people that the demons are, are so so clever. You know, and they are liars. They will pretend to leave if you put your faith in a certain thing like that. But in actual fact, they haven't left and they've still got control, as it were, over your life, albeit more um, in the background now. They still have an effect, um, you know, in your life. And that's why, for example, when I came out of all that, I did have the exorcism and the demons that had pretended to be spirit guides, had pretended to be uh, familiar spirits and so on, were actually cast out of me. And I have never, that was 20 years ago, I have never yet again ever saw... Uh, an ascended master or, uh, you know, an alien or a ghost or so on because they just, they know now that I believe their true identity is demonic so they don't even bother trying to trick me with that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the opposite now. If someone tells me they have a ghost in their house, um, I have on occasion myself or people I know have went there and challenged it and said, okay, you know, I realise you think this is a ghost but can we can we try something? The person will say, yeah, sure. And then we will say to this, you know, being in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, show your true identity. And the so-called ghost, you know, it's almost like a mask will fall away and you actually will see the demon that's actually there impersonating the so-called dead relative, ascended master or so on. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people who have been in that position will then come to faith in Jesus Christ because they realize, wow, that wasn't my dead gran or whatever. It was a demon. Mm. Uh, Laura, how many demons did you have? Oh, I don't know. I mean, a lot. A lot, you, you, a lot. you know, you can you consider the the amount of stuff that I was into, and, and really, I, I now class all of that as the occult. Back in the day, I would not have mm-hmm. saw myself as being an occultist. Mm-hmm. I would just have called myself a New Ager mm-hmm. or a spiritualist. But really, yeah. I now see that as all being under the banner of occult. And yeah, you know, I had a demon for every practice that I did. That even yoga, for example, much to my shock. Um, you know, later when I became a Christian, I had no idea. But but one time a Christian um, was talking about yoga and started praying about the you know the demons of yoga. Lo and behold, my body started to wriggle like a snake, and a demon came out. You know, it's Whoa. just <laughs> wow. demon came out. Huh? So wow. I don't know how many I had, but I can tell you I had a lot. Mm. So praise praise God, I've been set free from that. Mm. Um, question from M- uh, Mr. Two U Two says: Have the spirits ever? had any beneficial effect uh well you know when you think about it um it demons used to be angels you know they used to work on god's side if you like they they had powers so if if you think about someone even someone who's into like really evil kind of the darkest type of satanism for example they can work magic they can have Mm -hmm. Their spirit guides will do miracles and healings and and so on. Yeah, it works. Yeah, they can heal your body. Yeah, they can do all that. But just because something works doesn't mean it is good. You know, and the source of it is actually from Satan. And it's not something you want to be playing with Mm -hmm. after all. Mm -hmm. Mm. So so have you ever heard or did you try yourself to call on the name of Allah to get deliverance? I can't remember it exactly, but as I said, when my mother and I were looking for help, we certainly looked to different gods and deity, mm-hmm. ga- uh, deities and goddesses and so on. So it's very possible we did. Um, you know, as I say, it wasn't until mm-hmm. I came to Jesus Christ that, that these demons started to, to leave. Is, is it safe to say it didn't work? Oh, it's safe to say it actually got worse, which <laughs> okay. now I understand was simply because we were actually opening more spiritual doors. Mm-hmm. Um so rather than helping, it actually got worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, here, in, here in the United States, I don't know uh, how how much of the world news you read, but there's a lot of hatred and anger bubbling up all across our country. Um, and uh, what do you think, from your perspective, is the root cause of that? Um, well, I mean, often sometimes people's, you know, anger... Uh, is valid depending on what they're being angry about but i think you know in general over society you know over the generations people have become more 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 angry and more 
more more um, wanting to, to to question things and test things out and, and and speak up when they feel something's wrong. But and that's you know admirable in, in one sense. But in the other sense, of, of also there is I guess more kind of rebellion going on now too. You know, as I mentioned earlier, we have more things now like satanic churches and so on um, being really quite open, whereas centuries ago it would be far more secretive and, you know, you didn't hear much about secret societies and so on. But now um, it's almost as if the veil has lifted and all of this is coming much more to the front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh so do you, as far as the United States goes, but what about, say, as you look across the, the world, do you see, I mean, you know, there was just that uh, attack in Spain and, and France. I mean, you might as well just go around Germany, now Russia, on and on and on mm-hmm. with, with these attacks worldwide. Is it, is there, do you see some sort of, uh, sort of a, a quickening of evil, uh, an, an increase of evil? And do you think it's leading anywhere? Yeah, you know, I, I do. And, People might say, well, you've always had evil times. Look at the medieval times. Heinous crimes happened then and so on. I know that. But, yeah, I do feel in general things are becoming more evil. And I, I basically do feel it, it's because what the Bible predicts really is happening, that this this is um, the, the last days. Uh, Satan and, and demons, their time is short. And um, more and more evil things will happen. And as I say, they are just in many senses, trying to, to bring fear, to bring... They hate people, they absolutely hate uh, people, and they want to harm as many people as possible, and they want to keep people away from finding God. That is their that is their purpose. And that's why they do these things like pretend to be ghosts or, or, or spirit guides or, or aliens or whatever to just take people away from thinking about Jesus, put their faith somewhere else, get interested in somewhere else so that that, that person spiritually... Um, is in the dark, and I know that sounds a horrible thing to say, but but that's what I believe in, and that's where where I've came from, um, you know. And as I said earlier, test it, you know. I I have known of of of, of demons that pretend to be, yeah, they'll pretend to be mm. dead people, but mm. they will even pretend to be living people. Mm. Now, when you have someone that says that, that that their gran appeared, but she's actually alive and well and over and Germany, but she was actually here in the house talking to them, and she wasn't dead at all. They can impersonate anyone. They can morph like shapeshifters. One minute pretend to be Michael Jackson speaking to you, the next minute pretend to be a dead relative. When they're tested in Jesus' name with scriptures, when they're tested about the blood of Jesus and about the cross, and truths like that from the Bible, uh-huh. they show their true colours. Now, sometimes it doesn't always happen at first. And then I say, test it deeper. Don't give up. Test it deeper. And often they don't disappear straight away or, or you know, scream and, and disappear because you have got that inherited um, occult phenomena about you that has went down your family line. It's so strong in you that it does need a further testing. Um, Sometimes for people, just the name of Jesus will do straight away. Sometimes you got to keep going at them until they show their true colors. Uh, Laura, here here in the United States, there's been a lot of talk, usually usually on the internet, that uh, that our leaders might, and you mentioned shapeshifters, uh, that that some of our leaders are shape shifting reptilians, and if you have a a video of them, sometimes you can stop frame and you can see them like the slits in their eyes, or you can see their skin have reptilian scales. Uh, do you have uh, in your country? Do you have? Like leaders, royals, or anybody else that you may consider a shape-shifting reptilian, demon type of person? Uh, again, for me, it's kind of like the Mandela effect phenomena. I don't tend to research into that or, you know, debate that kind of a topic. Personally, I, I, I don't think that it's uh, real. I, I just think it's a, it's a distraction to, mm-hmm. to keep people, you know, looking at things like that. But even if it is real, you know, my answer would still be the same, that at the end of the day, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ will win the, the spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, here's, here's a question. It says, is it true, this is from Phil in North Carolina, is it true that the Druids uh, came to fame in the United States before the Indi- uh, they came to the United States before the Indians ever migrated over the Russian land bridge in Alaska? Hey, I don't know. I'm not a historian, you know. All right. Another question. Uh, did you, <laughs> when you were in your, uh, say, practice, did you cast spells and did they work? 
Uh, no, I didn't cast spells because we didn't do that. We um, didn't consider ourselves witches. We were, you know, spiritualists. So not it's not something that we did. I know that some mediums today will cast spells, but I think there's more syncretism these days with what goes on. There's a lot of overlap with different spiritual practices. But back in the day, no, we didn't actually cast spells. Mm-hmm. Um Somebody told me that uh, somebody was trying to cast a spell on them, and and what they were doing, they were taking uh, weeds and putting them in X's in front of their house. Uh, have you ever heard of that? Does that mean anything to you? Uh, basically, all different kinds of spell casting, witchcraft, and so on. It, it is real and it is powerful. Um, especially if, uh, again, as I say, if the person has inherited it and it goes way way back in their family tree, it's liable to be with them very strongly. So, and especially if the people know what they're doing, then it, it will work. Yeah, it is powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people claim also that they've had dead cats put on their porch and such like that. Is that some sort of spell thing going on, or is it just cat just fell dead because because they had enough? Oh, maybe the cat had enough, but maybe it was real. But yeah, you know, there there are certain occultist groups that that is one of the typical things they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I did do a program on TV last year. It was broadcast uh, around Europe by satellite. And it was all about satanic ritual abuse and exactly about that type of thing that you're talking about. Yeah, these things are real. Um, but people, when they come to Jesus Christ, they have been healed from being involved in that or, or even being victimized um, by those types of things. Mm-hmm. All right, another question for you. Is it true that Lucifer only attacks certain key people in power and he uses his other fallen angels to do his dirty work? So, it, and I guess the question is... Uh, does does Lucifer attack people individually, or does he clone himself? Does he can he be in multiple places at different times, or is it one person at a time, and then say the other people he just sends he sends his demonic minions? Uh, yeah, I believe he is Satan, so he's just the one being. You know, he was a fallen angel, mm-hmm. um, and I believe he has a very organized hierarchy, a very organized uh, infrastructure, mm-hmm. and that yes, he has many demons under his control, and a person may be operating through demons that you know the person themselves have never ever encountered Satan, but certainly the demons will all answer back to Satan if you like. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, obviously, there's world leaders. You would think that uh, his attention would be turned to them, uh, like, say, our previous yeah. president, things like that. But, uh, yeah. but, but, but you said he came to you. So wh- how, did, how is it that you drew his attention? Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I forgot to, to mention that. Yeah, I, I agree with you that it's pretty likely that Satan's more interested in world leaders, let's face it, um, than anyone else, and probably some high-ranking satanic groups um, too, the Illuminati and so on. Um, top guys in the Freemasonry, etc. When my mother believed that Lucifer came to her, I've often wondered if it truly, really was Satan. Because let's face it, she was just a, a you know, a, a medium. Um, she wasn't a high-ranking Satanist or witch or something. I suspect that, that was just one of his demons, and it was pretending to be Lucifer. Hmm. Um, at, at any rate, at the name of Jesus Christ, it left. Hmm. I wonder if there's a crime in hell called impersonating, you know, impersonating the devil, you know. Oh, but, but, there might be. <laughs> but but uh, listen, uh, before your mother uh, left, let's just say, uh, did did you did she uh, did she accept Jesus? She did, uh, and that was wonderful. But the problem was that the Christian church we went to did not believe in exorcism. There was no deliverance ministry, so. You know, although when she called in the name of Jesus, yes, it worked. It only worked for so long, Mm -hmm. simply because she and I still needed exorcism. We still needed to uh, have those curses cut from our lives. And because that didn't happen for us, that's how she sadly, tragically killed herself. And that's why I then went to get exorcism for myself, get all of that cut off me and put an end to all of that in my life. Okay. Uh Okay. Do you hold that particular church in any way responsible? Oh, how can you say that? You know, I I was upset at the time, let's be honest, but that guy was a young pastor. If I was a young Christian in his shoes, I might have, you know, done the same thing. It's No, I think it is what it is. But, you know, he now has a deliverance ministry, I've heard, and, and praise God, I'm, you know, thrilled about that maybe even because of my mother and I he, he learned that it was a necessary ministry 
Um, and it's certainly why I uh, I do um, urge people to, to take deliverance ministry seriously and to believe that these things are real and it's not just trickery. Mm. Um, uh, here's a question for you out of the Fast Blast. It says, uh, Laura, do you think there will be a spiritual awakening in Scotland? Oh, well, I sure hope so. You know, I, I hope there'll be a spiritual awakening everywhere because, you know, I believe the Bible and it does say that, that we're in the... But in the latter days, I believe there's evidence of that. And in the last days, many will abandon the faith and start following doctrines of, of demons. There will be this great falling away. And then, of course, Lucifer really turns up the deception levels and many people in the world will sadly come under his um, new world order, you know, one world religion, whatever. And yeah, it would, would be so wonderful that if so many people would come to Jesus before that happens and the deception really becomes so much worse and so much widespread. Okay. Now, since since then, have you cast out devils? Have you performed uh -huh. exorcisms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have. Um, and it's not something I was looking for, but I, I suspect because of my past, Jesus knew that I would be a believer who would believe in this and would accept it and, and would want to do something about it, certainly because of what my mother and I went through. Um, uh, you know, and it is a gift in the Bible, it's described in there, and um, yep, and it's so needed today, and so many people, um, you know, will go to exorcists nowadays, it's almost as if exorcists are, well, look at Bill Bean, Bill Bean is run off his feet, he's constantly travelling and doing conferences and casting demons out, out you know, constantly, because there is such a need. Well, I, I would say that there's a lot of need out there, it seems like a lot of people have demons um, mm -hmm. Here's a, another question for you. Do you think that uh, Lucifer has sit down meetings with the the globalists? Uh, very, very possibly. Um, if he doesn't, then I believe that he will certainly be channeling. Um, you know, a lot of these guys are into the old cult. A lot of them probably do channel, uh, and I believe that they are channeling so called spirit guides or so called aliens and so on. Mm -hmm. And these beings are telling them a pack of lies, promising them, promising them the world, you know, mm -hmm. promising them everything. So, yeah, they, they will be advising them, no doubt, advising them on what to do with their country and, mm -hmm. you know, policies and so on. I'm convinced of that. But mm -hmm. again, sadly, you know, Satan at the end of the day will come for his pound of flesh. Mm -hmm. And it is like selling their soul to the devil. Their, their wonderful spirit guide or whatever will mm -hmm. not be uh, eventually on their deathbed. Um, mm -hmm. They will find that out. Uh, it, here, here, in, here in uh, here in the U.S. of A., there's a, a, a hysteria about uh, trying to get a lot of people to to be transgender. Uh, what, what do you think the devil's up with that? Is that is that from Satan, or you think that's it's something else? Yeah, I, I don't think it's good because I think it is causing confusion for folks, and and I, you know I do think it's it's sad, um, and I think you know going back to that I do believe in the Bible, I believe in, in Adam and Eve, and I, and I think whatever it is to do with human beings, Satan and demons will try to change us in some way, try to make us want to do these other things, because we are made in God's image. Demons hate God with a passion, they hate people with a passion, and, and so they don't like us to be in God's image, they would rather we would try and change our image uh, in, in some sense, and mm -hmm. Just, I mean, some of the poor folks today, you see the plastic surgery they have done, I think, oh my goodness, that mm -hmm. it, it's just too much. Um, and you really feel for them because, the, the, you know, they're hurting inside and that's why they're looking to all these different things. Mm -hmm. And basically I would say, you know, whatever it is that, that, that is giving you pain, whatever it is that is hurting you or whatever is mm -hmm. confusing you, Jesus does has the, have the answer and he can lead you into truth mm -hmm. and, and, you know, total fulfillment in life. Uh, let me uh, th let me go just a little bit political here. Um, uh, we have a, a president. I'm sure you probably be heard. His name is Donald Trump. Um, he is universally hated. I mean, the hate is to an extreme. Um, the, frequently, we just had a U.S. senator call for his assassination just a couple of days ago. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had uh, 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 
mus- musicians and actors call for his assassination. The mm-hmm. hate, the hate is uh, is so deep and and so vast that that people can't think or sleep. Some people can't even sleep. They have to see doctors because they they hate him so much. Doesn't that say now? I'm not whether his policies are good or not, or what he tweets out is good or not. I'm not debating that mm-hmm. here on the program, but I'm talking the virulent hate. This I mean, from what I see, it's seething. I, it's it's a hatred on a level that. It's sort of unimaginable that any decent American would ever do, even if somebody did do something wrong. I mean, I, they didn't even hate uh, Charles Manson this this much. Um, mm-hmm. But the hate is, is so vast in so many different facets. Doesn't that say that some say spiritually that there's something about, you know, as as Lucifer wants to destroy man because man is made mm-hmm. in the image of God. Uh, mm-hmm. So Lucifer hates man so much. Wouldn't his minions hate? Now, Trump is not necessarily a representative of God that I can tell, but the mm-hmm. hate seems to be on, on a level that they hated Jesus. They wanted to crucify him. And I would say mm-hmm. right there that the, a, a large segment, including his own political party, would enjoy to crucify him, not just make him go away or say impeach him or something. They want, they want more than that, much more than that. Is, is that mm-hmm. a spiritual thing? I think so, you know. Um, Alistair Crowley was said to be the most evil person who ever lived. And, you know, back in the 60s, you had people like the Beatles. You had a lot of the the, the, the hippie movement, actually. The, the, the name Truth Seeker apparently came from Alistair Crowley. Um, and as someone who, who was a self-confessed the most evil man on earth, and yet he had such a, a lot of fans, and you certainly didn't hear of people hating him, yeah, but isn't it strange that, that Jesus was, was hated? And, you know, I don't think, for example, that um, Trump is... Some people might say, well, he's from God. Some other people might say, well, I think he's the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think he's the Antichrist, and that's simply because the Antichrist is going to have such adulation and such love and, and, and following and fans worldwide, mm-hmm. and we certainly can't say that about Trump. So I don't think he's uh, emulating the Antichrist. And as you say, you know, I don't know the guy personally. I'm not saying he's um, uh, definitely God's man for mm-hmm. the hour or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Certainly when he came into power, I actually did feel the uh, the anointing of God when the Obamas left. I was watching it on TV and I saw the Obamas get in the helicopter and I really felt the power of God coming strongly. So wow. I interpreted that as meaning hey, maybe, you know, God wants mm-hmm. Donald Trump in instead. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong saying that, but I certainly felt, felt the anointing when the when the Obamas left office. Mm-hmm. Well, there certainly was a, a sigh of relief for a lot of people. This, our stock market just shot through the roof, which is an indication of, of people's goodwill. But but the, the hate that he has, it reminds me that when they when Jesus when they wanted to crucify Jesus, a number of people made false accusations against him. They kept mm-hmm. accusing him and accusing him, and one by one, their accusations were found to be false. And that seems to be what's going on now. There's these constant accusations. I mean, it's endless. And mm-hmm. not not saying that Jesus or that 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 Trump is bringing the gospel, but uh, you know, uh, Paul uh, killed Christians. And, you know, Moses killed the taskmaster. And I mean, there are various mm-hmm. stories where uh, and, and we all know what, you know, those that read the Bible know what all the things that David did. But these 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 these, these failed men, God seemed to have used them uh, mm-hmm. for for a, a, a major purpose. It's just interesting to me, the hatred that that he's espousing on a level that nobody's yeah. ever seen. I agree with you. And I think, you know, there, there is maybe something to be said about folks who say that tr- Trump is um similar to Cyrus, as it were, that, that sometimes God will have someone in position who we might not consider a very godly person or, or you know, a great Christian or anything like it, a, a failed individual, but for some reason God has got them there because there is something that person is going to do that somehow um, is going to be against what Satan wants to do in the country. Hmm. Well, he certainly has got Satan attention. That's for, for daggone sure. All right, another here's a question from Kentucky Girl out of our live chat. It says, don't people know who, who, who Satan is and who serve him? Don't they wonder that the deal they're making with the devil, the devil is going to turn around and destroy them? Why don't they know that? Do, do, they, do they really trust the devil that he's going to, well, I don't know, take care of them? I guess so. Um, yeah, I guess so. And obviously there's different types of Satanism and different, you know, 
grades of it. But but yeah, I, I guess they, they, they believe the lies that they're told and some of them will even say they know they're going to hell but that Satan has promised them mm-hmm. part of the kingdom, that, that you know, hell's actually a great place, it's full of parties or they might be told it's full of orgies or mm-hmm. you know, all sorts of sin and they can do what they want, blah blah blah. They certainly don't think that they're going to be punished along with, with Satan or kept away from God and from mm-hmm. peace and from joy. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting. Just, just, just a, a little bit more on trouble, and, and we'll move on. But um, th- he, he has people that pray for him in the Oval Office, and uh, uh, I noticed that uh, that in the um, the the Spain attack uh, that the, our previous president always seems to say, uh, thinking of you. And and there's kind of two major political parties here, the Democrats and Republicans. The Democrats always seem to be saying, thinking of you. They never say, praying for you. And I, and I always find that odd because the, sort of the Republicans and, and even uh, Donald Trump said, we are praying for the vet family and victims. But the, the previous administration, they'll say, we're thinking. I'm thinking, well, what's that going to do? Is, is happy? Is that like thinking happy thoughts or, I mean, is that going to project something? I mean, is a, is a thinking thought, I mean, thinking what thinking more, more, you know, thinking that hopefully more evil will come or, or thinking they wish they had a hamburger. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what thinking means. It's almost like <laughs> there's a spiritual gap there that one doesn't, uh-huh. there yeah. doesn't seem to be anything on the backside of that thinking. Like there's no soul or something. I don't know what it is. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe they are meaning they're sending out, uh, you know, new age kind of healing vibrations, or maybe they just mean we're thinking of you. You know that that's a nice thing to do, but who knows? <laughs> doesn't doesn't seem very powerful. Thinking seems like that's almost like channeling, you know. But I'm sure they're not <laughs> channeling for good things. Um, I have your uh, a book cover uh, on our screen at Spiritual Quest. It shows uh, a woman on a uh, on a uh, with with a what do what do you call those globes? Crystal ball? Yeah. Yeah. What, do those work? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, anything, any um, divination tool will will work, or else people wouldn't use it. You know, the folks who are into this kind of stuff, they want power, they want results, so they're not going to dedicate their life and you know hours of study to something that, that quite frankly, they'd be best just throwing in the the bin. But yeah, the, these things these things do work, uh, as do crystals or whatever. Anything you uh, want to imbue power into, I, I believe the demons see that, they recognize that, and they will come and they will inhabit that object. The object itself is just an object, but they will inhabit it. Um, similar, you know, to, to my point of whatever someone believes in, whether it's fairies or um, little elves or whatever, I've known people who started to see fairies and, and started to talk to fairies and so on, and when they were told to challenge it in the name of Jesus, it morphed and became the demon that it was actually truly true identity that it was um, pretending to be. So yeah, these things are real. That the power is real. All right. So 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 you're in Scotland there, and there, there's castles there. D- does anybody ever try to pray? You know, and I think some of those castles have gargoyles on them. Uh, does anybody ever try to pray? And do you know if those gargoyles ever get off of those uh, the top of those castles at night and go haunt people? Because I always felt <laughs> that they did. I always felt that they did. So I don't know. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. You know, they're, I think they're cemented on there pretty strong or some pretty strong super but, but glue there. A spell, does, but, a spell wouldn't bring them off there and then they go flying down, you know? Uh, well, maybe the demon inhabiting it comes out and goes flying about. That's possible, but uh, not the actual rock itself. <laughs> well, see, I, well, I kind of see them as the monkeys in uh, the flying monkeys in Wizard of Oz, you know, and they're flying, yeah. they're flying around, man, haunting people, man. Uh, all right, here's a great question. It says, uh, this is from Peter in Australia. <laughs> he says, Laura, can those who practice dark arts actually use this upcoming solar eclipse to ramp up their efficiency of their spells? Will that increase Again, you know, it's like I said, they can use anything. You know, if you want there to be power in something, there will be power in it. So, you know... As we know, different types of occultism uh, do claim to have more power on the full moon, for example, certain dates throughout the year, certain calendar dates, certain equinoxes and all of that. Um, Yeah, you know, God created um, the universe, but people can pervert that and and certainly get power out of it for for wicked means, of course. Mm -hmm. 
So really then, somebody could get power uh, from a potato chip if they believe they can get a demon to, to, to operate through it? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at the Old Testament and, and, and the people there, they would have certain idols, certain, they, they would make their own little gods. They would, they would carve a little god out of wood, for example, and then bow down and worship it and start praying to it whenever, and, and, and things would start to happen. So, yeah, I believe demons are in the atmosphere all the time. They see somebody doing something like that, putting their faith, putting their belief into an object. They'll come along, jump on that object. That object is then... Um, demonized and, and will start to produce effects and results. Absolutely. Um, besides the the snakes on your mother's bed, I mean, that's, that is some pretty scary, gruesome stuff there. Uh, what is the scariest thing that personally has happened to you? Well, it would be, it would be irrelevant. It would be very similar to that type of thing. Um, it, it was scary during the day, but it was even worse at night um, when it was dark when such things happened and you were completely paralyzed um, whether you were asleep or whether you were awake and you just totally you really feel like you're going to be killed and it's the most evil feeling you could ever imagine yeah that that kind of stuff is just absolutely awful and you know when I first came to Jesus I still was getting attacked like that but eventually as I said to you once I got the curses cut and I had exorcism all of that stuff stopped you said um, that the the young preacher tried to get your husband to commit you to a psych ward, psycho ward. Uh, uh -huh. Did he not see any of these things happen to you, or, or do you tell him this happened to me and this happened? And he never seen any of it. Did he see any of this happen to you? My the pastor, the pastor saw none of it. Um, my my husband, you know, knew me from basically since we left school, he, he knew me when I was involved in spiritualism. I used to take him there, actually. I used to take him to seances and so on. So he knew that this stuff was, was real and, and not just a uh, mental illness. Which is so amazing. Did your husband try to, did your husband try to console you? Did he pray? I mean, what, 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 what's his spiritual, uh, I mean, you don't have to, I, I'm, I'm not prying. I just want to know because, yeah, uh, sure. At, at that place? time, he at that time he didn't believe in Jesus. Um, he he's he's a biomedical scientist, very much as you know a scientific background, and and so he didn't believe in, in Jesus then. Um, and yeah, he tried to console me, but quite frankly, he was at a complete loss as to how to how to help. Um, as I say, but then eventually him and I went round Glasgow looking for a Christian church that could help us, and thankfully we did eventually find one. And then, uh, what, what about your husband? Did he did he uh, come to Jesus? Yeah, and for him, you know, it was um, really looking at the the scientists who are out there and very very clever, very scholarly people around the world who um, we call them a apologetics apologists mm -hmm. that the, the, they are such clever clever guys you know they're, they're professors at universities and all of that and yet they have come to believe in jesus and they see that science and faith are perfectly matched and they're not the the two in opposition as many people are led to believe hmm. in scotland are there a lot of churches yeah um there's a lot that are I would call um, nominal churches that, that basically, like I said earlier, the type of church when I was young and I might go to, it, it was Christian in name, but, but not really in belief. And I think even the, the ministers in the churches don't really believe the Bible that they're preaching from. And it's more of a kind of a tradition, really, rather than a heartfelt mm -hmm. belief. But the, but there are, yeah, there are those that, that are, you know, true mm -hmm. believers and there are those that do see the miraculous power of God mm -hmm. happen as well. Yeah, we, 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 call, we call those Chinos, Christian in name only. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's a word for you right there. Um, there's a word, yep. All right, uh, here's a question for you. If you pray for God, uh, if you pray to God for a blessing on your home, uh, will God give you a blessing of protection? Um, yeah, but I would suggest first you actually have it cleansed and make sure there aren't any demons in it. You How know, do you, do that? you look at, for example, you know, in the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, it mentions curses and blessings. So, yeah, God is desperate to bless everyone's home 
I believe. But first, he needs to remove any curses that may be there, mm -hmm. and then his blessing can, you know, become fully manifested mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I learned recently that, uh, the, the, you know, a lot of people pray, and they say they, they pray for God's blessing, and let's just say uh, uh, you pray for health or something. Uh, but the thing I've kind of learned is people are saying that it's okay to pray for a blessing, but you also need to simultaneously pray for a, a, a blockage of something, you know, uh, against, say, uh, a, a, you know, a, a demon. Say, like, you're, you're asking God to, to, to lead you a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, I've heard that the devil hears your prayer as well and will bring you a false door you know a false what looks like to be the door that you think you're supposed to go so while you mm -hmm. pray for the blessing say god show me the door you also need to say almost pray in the negative and say uh, uh, and i and i pray against any spirit that would try to mislead me and show me a false door because most people are they're kind of they're everybody's mm -hmm. with the first mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. almost and you know yes yeah, it's, it's it's about being you know discerning and being wise isn't it and again you know in the bible it does talk about that the apostle paul he was always teaching the, the churches about the different kind of deceptions that they were getting involved in. And he said, test the spirits, you know, test it, that it really is God that you think you're hearing from and it's not a demon. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. People, doesn't no matter how close a person is to God, uh, they can still be deceived by the other side. And we do need that discernment and that wisdom and, and yeah, test it. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we see here, uh, in, in the States, uh, a lot of stuff going on in Europe. It looks like Europe is changing rapidly. And, uh, I, I, I frankly won't ever go over there, uh, on any sort of vacation now as a result, but I'm wondering in Scotland has what's going on in central Europe, say Germany, Spain, France, that type, the type of terrorism going on, is that going on in Scotland um, we we did see something similar in, in recent years with uh, one of our airports, and, and and yeah, you know, obviously there tends to be more in London of this type of thing. But but yeah, you know, I guess it will increase just around the world as time goes on. Mm. Uh, the does the Book of Revelation say that there will come a time when God will thrust His sickle in the earth and He'll remove the wheat from the chaff is there a certain uh i don't want to say religion because i'm tipping my hand there but is there a certain group that may be considered the chaff and is that the chaff that is causing the turmoil worldwide uh i'm not quite sure what you mean by that you know um okay is islam uh the chaff of the earth oh i see i see um I just said it. <laughs> oh, it's very possible, but I think it's probably more than that. It's the Illuminati and all as well, you know, and, and, and all the kind of uh, groups that, that Satan is behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where do, you, where do you go from here, Laura? What, what, what are you doing in the future? You're doing, you're doing programs like this, and you have a message. What, what is that central theme of your message? Well, basically, it is sharing the truth as I see it and, and the urging people that whatever kind of a spirituality they're involved in, please think for a moment that maybe you are actually being deceived just exactly the same way I was and that Jesus Christ really is the Savior and that he wants you to be safe with him for eternity and not deceived by any other types of uh, beings and really just to come to him and ask him into your life, ask him to, to forgive you and bless you and, and heal you uh, as you begin to see your life transformed by his love and his grace. Mm. Um, do you have a, uh, since you, since you left the occult, has they, the occult uh, in, in any form, whether through human or entities, tried to get you back? No. Um, and it's interesting because sometimes people do feel tempted back into the previous lifestyles. But I think for me it's because I saw the, the really the darkness of it and, and the truth of it, how demonic it was. After all, my mother took her life um, and, and that I just so, so believe these beings are, are, are from Satan. As I say, I've never ever saw a so-called ghost again or a so-called ascended master again or anything like it. So, um, and, and I just believe that it is so demonic that I'm not attracted to it anymore. Hmm. Hmm. 
uh, Laura, we have uh, some folks in our in our uh, live chat may uh, have a, a hard time believing that there is this Jesus. Would you uh, like to say a, a prayer for those who are having trouble believing that, that God is the answer, that God is real, that, 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 that the Savior of uh, the Jesus Savior is needed in their life? Is there a prayer you can pray for them? Absolutely. And first, I would just like to say I was in the exact same boat. Um, I believe the whole zeitgeist movement, but that has actually been debunked. There are historians who are not even Christian historians who will say there is actually evidence that Jesus Christ did live, die, rise again, that, that, that the Bible is actually true. You can check that out. That evidence is actually there, that he's not just the reincarnation of so-called previous savior types, that he actually is the savior. So, yeah, I would love to pray for them. Um Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be on Daniel's show. And for those who are listening that, that, that don't know you yet or think that, you know, this is just a load of nonsense. Father, please open their eyes and, and touch them. Show them, answer their prayers. Show them that, that you really are the Savior and that you have a wonderful plan for their life and that you are longing to be close to them and walk intimately with them. Jesus, just pour out your love upon them and open their eyes to the truth. And I say this with deep humility, Lord, because I, I, I've been there myself when I didn't believe you. So, Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity and touch these precious, precious people in your lovely name. Amen. Amen. All right, Laura Maxwell, I appreciate you staying up so very, very late to come on the Edge Television broadcast. Can we have you on again sometime? Oh, that would be my pleasure. Thank you so much, Daniel. Okay, thank you for coming on the show. How'd you like it? Well, that was great. Yeah, thanks. Sir. It was really, it was really interesting, and I enjoyed being on it. So, thank you for having me, sir. Okay. All right. Stay safe over there, Laura. You too. All right. Good evening. Bye bye. All right, everybody. That was Laura Maxwell from Glasgow, Scotland, uh, telling her of her experience of dealing with the occult and what damage it did to her life. Man, there's some terrible. And Facebook, and there you go, Daniel Ott. For the edge. By the way, wait a minute. Let me just end. I want to end with this quote that I started the program with. A quote from Martin Luther King. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Violence as a way of achieving racial justice is both impractical and immoral. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. So let's get love in our heart and let's change some things in this country for the better. Daniel Ott for The Edge. Bye-bye.